Hey, I'm Alec, and today we're gonna to talk about how to set up a desktop fabrication station for resin 3D printing. Your resin 3D printer is on its way and you just can't wait to work with it. I would be excited too, but make sure that your workspace is as ready for it as you are. There are a lot more considerations to make with resin-based 3D printing than with plastic-based 3D printing, or FFF. So I've compiled this checklist of different things you might need to prepare that you may not have thought of in preparing for your new arrival. Let's get started. I would highly encourage you to set up your resin printers or your resin print farm in a secluded area. The resin that's used in resin 3D printing gives off quite a bit of fumes, and if you spend too much time around it, it can get overwhelming. You'll also be working with a lot of isopropyl alcohol to clean off your prints, so that just adds another layer of fumes on top of it. So you just wanna make sure that if you can, to ventilate the area or just keep things in a more private location. Whenever we use a resin 3D printer at Matterhackers HQ, we always set them up in the print lab, which is away from any sort of office spaces that's in use. And then because there's an outside door right there, we can set up a box fan to help ventilate any fumes, although we hardly ever have enough to need that. I have seen other maker spaces and users just set up their printers in a very small room off to the side. That way they don't have to worry about any sort of ventilation issue. Keep your resins in a cool, dark place because 3D printing resins solidify or cure with exposure to light. So make sure your lids are screwed on tightly and you dedicate either a cabinet or a toolbox to all your resin storage. And compared to FFF 3D printing, you won't accumulate nearly as much resin as you would with filament because you can pour every last drop into the vat instead of having a bunch of scraps left over. Tools for success, read the manual. As resin 3D printers have an element of toxicity, there will likely be a section within the handbook listing out the proper handling the manufacturer expects. It's important to follow these guidelines to avoid things like overflows, spills, and general messes. Some may specify different order of operations or specific material refill instructions. There are of course the obvious supplies like gloves, paper towels, and isopropyl alcohol, but there are many other tools that will prove helpful. Many of the tools you might find in an FFF 3D printing station will also be helpful with resin 3D printing, like flush cutters for support removal, a tool like a spatula to remove parts from the build plate, or a file to remove the burrs where supports were. Now these are just some of the common tools, but there are others that differ, like a silicone mat or tray to go under the printer to help collect any potential spills or debris, and a washing station and a curing station. Now the washing station can be as low tech as a glass jar with some isopropyl alcohol to swish around your parts, or like a pickle container with a built-in strainer, or it can be as high tech as an ultrasonic cleaning setup. The UV curing station can be as low tech as using the power of the sun, or as high tech as a fully UV lit cabinet with a turntable to get it lit from all angles. Now just because I haven't mentioned a tool within this topic, that doesn't mean that it won't be something that you find that is very useful. So be sure to keep an eye out for anything that will help make your process even easier. Cleanliness is a much bigger part of resin 3D printing than it is with FFF 3D printing, as if you aren't careful, you will get resin everywhere and leave a sticky trail wherever you go. Isopropyl alcohol is your friend here and will help clean up almost any mess. Let me give you some tips in a logical working order from opening a new bottle to disposing of it. Put on some nitrile or latex gloves and have paper towels and isopropyl alcohol on hand to wipe up any spills as you handle the resin. Check the fill line on your resin printer's vat. Some have a printed or molded inline showing you a maximum fill, while others rely on you knowing where that is without the marking. In that case, lower your build plate to the vat, usually through the LCD, for the next step, or follow whatever's in the manual. Shake the bottle to thoroughly mix the pigment that's in the resin. You can experiment with this as we've tried not thoroughly mixing it and having a little bit of a smoky finish instead of a fully opaque printed part. Wet a paper towel with isopropyl alcohol and set it aside. Then go ahead and crack open the bottle. Gently pour resin in up to the fill line or if it doesn't have one, with the build plate pressed against the vat, pour resin in until you have at least a quarter inch of space below the top of the vat. Otherwise, follow the instructions within the manual. Quickly tip up the bottle and wipe the mouth off with the prepared wet paper towel. This will prevent any drips from accumulating and getting the lids stuck in place, or it will prevent you from having a really sticky bottle. Store the bottle in your resin cabinet until your printer needs a refill. When you've poured out every drop that you can, you are ready to dispose of the bottle. Pour a little isopropyl alcohol into the bottle, close it, and swish it around to help thin out all the resin left on the inside. Then, with a container you don't mind throwing away should it not fully cure, 
Go ahead and pour your resin into that and then go set it out in the sun. Or if you have one, set it up in your cure station so that it will solidify all of the resin left over within the solution. And so it can help off gas any of the isopropyl alcohol that's left. Resin cannot be disposed of with regular trash unless it is cured solid. So your paper towels, your gloves, any unused resin needs to be completely solid before you put it in regular trash. Something that's not often talked about is the proper procedure with the actual handling of the resins. Yes, you need to wear nitrile gloves, and yes, there are fumes, but you have to be careful to not get this on your skin. Or if you do, wash it off with soap and water as soon as possible, as in put everything down and go wash off. It is possible to develop an allergy over time to these resins, causing a severe allergic reaction. So be sure that you don't get this on you and treat this like any other chemical you might in a lab. Follow the guidelines set forth by a 3D printer's manufacturer. But in general, these machines are pretty easy to take care of. Just make sure that any sliding surfaces, like your linear rods or rails, are well lubricated and that they don't bind, so that your Z-axis moves smoothly. The regular consumables on a resin 3D printer will include things like the VAT film or the LCD. The VAT film has a lifespan because it does actually stick to the printed parts as it wears down. It's supposed to release them, but over time it starts to stick really well and it causes print failures because the part doesn't release. These are pretty easy to replace and the specifications will be in your manual telling you how long they will usually last and how to actually replace them. If your resin 3D printer uses an LCD to cure the printed part by masking off a UV grid underneath, like this printer here, those also have a lifespan because of the heat generated by the UV lights, killing some of the pixels within the LCD. So over time, you will start to get some dead pixels, either causing some small holes within your printed parts or towers, depending on which state the pixel dies in. Again, this will be specified in the manual about how long the LCD should last. We have many videos and articles detailing how to solve various issues that you may have with your 3D printers, but for any hard issue that you just can't seem to figure out, be sure to contact our support line, which you can either call or email to help give you dedicated and specific help on your problem. Resin 3D printers offer another step up in resolution and complexity for your 3D models, which brings high detail manufacturing to a more attainable level. Is there something in the setup I didn't mention that you feel is important for others to know about? I'm always open to learning more and sharing that knowledge with our viewers, so be sure to leave a comment down below. Stay safe with your resins. I'm Alec from Matter Hackers. Thanks for watching. Hey there, thanks for watching that video on desktop fabrication station for resin 3D printing. I hope it gave you some ideas on what to do with your resin 3D printer, whether it's on the way or you already have one. If you want to read some in-depth articles, be sure to go to matterhackers.com or if you want to stay up to date with all our digital manufacturing content, be sure to subscribe. See you on the next one.